We are in video number three of our three-part series on how to build a wall cabinet. We've already done the carcass and we did the face frame. In this one, we're gonna make the door here on the router table and we're also gonna just do some additional little details on the cabinet. We're gonna make the door with a tongue and groove router bit set, routers unplugged so we can have a look up close here. With a match set like this, it makes it really, really easy to do tongue and groove and the door that we're about to do. This cutter is the end grain cutter that's gonna leave behind a tongue where it's got the ball bearing in the middle. And then this cutter is the groove cutter. We'll use that on all four of the parts so that there's a slot, a groove, that'll receive the panel for the door. Gonna do that end grain cut first. And what we need to do to get this set up is lower the bit and what I'm aiming for here for altitude is on this piece I've marked out the tongue position so I've got two lines equidistant from that face equidistant from that face and we're not going to go straight to project pieces we're going to start with scrap. So, approximate the height of the bit. Looks pretty good. Then our other setup related thing is the fence location. There's a ball bearing inside that cutter that I mentioned earlier. I'm on the ball bearing with my straight edge. Bring the fence forward until it hits the straight edge and then lock the fence in place. So bottom line is face of the fence is even with the ball bearing. When you make this cut, you want a backer board so that a couple things, that's gonna help prevent this from walking. This piece is too narrow to feed without a backer board. Additionally, as we go through and exit the cut, that's gonna help prevent chipping on the outfeed side here. Next step is to check your work. And a good way to do that is to gauge it. So if I come in from this face, lock that, and then flip, is it the same? That's what we're looking for, that's our test. When that is the same, then the tongue is centered on our work and we're ready to go. Now, for your door parts. The formula is in the plan that tells you how to calculate the sizes of your door parts. So have a look at that formula. Don't just go off the cut list because your cabinet might end up just a tiny bit different than the one that's shown in the plan. So use the formula in order to determine the lengths of your rails and the lengths of your styles. Once you've got that set, it's a good idea to mark the backs of your rails and the backs of your styles. And then when I feed these to make sure they're consistent, I'm going to feed them always so that it's back face up. At this stage of the game then we can go rotate. It's a lot like the pocket hole discussion which was make sure you rotate between passes, not flip between passes because we want to make sure that the same reference face is down for all our cuts. Even though we've centered the tongue, having uh, the same reference face down all the time is a good way to make sure that the, face is, the faces of your door parts are going to be nice and flush. Two cuts on each rail, end grain on each one.
Now I'm going to do a bit change and then I'll show you how to get the height of that cutter approximated and we'll be ready to do our groovy cut. Groove cutters in. Then, and again, router unplugged, what I did is I raised that cutter until the top of the carbide is even with the top of the tongue that we just produced. Going to do a test cut, but this is going to get you really, really, really close to being right. Fence location is the same as we've already done. Face of the fence, even with the ball bearing. Then, it's good on these long groove cuts to add a feather board. And that'll give us hold down pressure right over that cutter just so that the board doesn't have the opportunity to lift because of course that would change the relative position of the groove. That would mess us up. That's a piece of scrap. And then our test is this piece just fed like that, face down. This one, X was up, so that was face down. If we flip and bring them together, are they flush across the face? I have just a little bit of a capacity right there, not a gap, but a high spot. So I'm going to make an adjustment in my cutter and then we'll come back and groove all of these pieces when it's right. Next thing, we'll dry fit that frame and I'll show you how to get really accurate dimensions for the panel. When it comes to measuring and part sizes and all that stuff, our sequence here is really important. We built the carcass, didn't do the face frame until the carcass was put together, and we extracted the face frame dimensions from the cabinet carcass. Then, once the face frame was on, we extracted the door dimensions from the face frame. Then, when the door frame is done, now we can figure out how big the panel has to be. So don't just go through the cut list and cut parts to those sizes, because things change a little bit. We make these little um, learning opportunities as we go, sometimes. So it's better to, to let one dimension lead to the next the way I've done here. Now the problem we're up against here is the panel's got to fit from the bottom of the groove to the bottom of the groove. Really easy way to measure that is you need a ruler that can go inside the groove. So that end is bottomed out in the groove. I'm going to make a mark at 10. Then just come back and measure from the other direction, bottom it out in the groove. So 10 plus this number, 13 and 3 eighths, 23 and 3 eighths, that's my overall length of that panel, minus a 16th, so it's got a little bit of wiggle room. We're using plywood, it's not an expansion deal. It just makes it a lot easier to put the door together if the panel isn't exactly the size of the groove to groove distance. Do the same calculation for the width of the panel, cut that to size, and then we can glue the door up. I've got glue on this corner, and I'll show you about putting glue on. With that rail and that style, make a little right angle like that, slide in your panel, So in the glue world, all we have to do is apply glue to the tongue, spread it, and when I put these together, I'm paying careful attention to keeping this long grain flush with this end grain.
Then it's simple from there. Glue the tongue, glue the tongue, capture everything with the last style. From there, get your door and clamps, measure diagonals, make adjustments as needed if the door isn't square. While this glue is drying, a couple other details we can do on the cabinet carcass. Next thing, screw cleats. You can't just run screws to hold this on a wall through the quarter inch back and hang it on the quarter inch back because it's going to pull the back will pull right out of the rabbits. We need something more robust for that. That's what these screw cleats are for. Cut these to size and again the dimensions in your cut list but rip them to width but then transfer the measurement so that you know you have a good fit inside your case. Now the reason I went with two pocket holes on this is not for screws, it's to make this a better, easier, like one-handed operation. That clamp goes in one pocket hole. Drive a screw in the other one. And you don't have to go back on this application, you really don't have to go back and put a second screw in the other hole. That other hole really is only there so I can take advantage of this. Now, I'm just checking my face frame there because I know on this side, face frame's just a little high, very easy to fix. And the deal with that is just a piece of plywood that had just a little bit of a crook in it. You could plane this, or you could sand it, or you could use a scraper. But work that down flush, and then one of our last details on that face frame is a quarter inch round over around the edge. Next step, hanging the door. To get the door on the cabinet first, same quarter inch round over that went on the face frame goes on the edge of the door, do that. Then look at the plan, locate those hinges on the back of the door, screw those in place. Now, get this on the case or on the face frame. The door has got three eighths overlay per side. So make a mark, three-eighths from the face frame edge, three-eighths from the face frame edge, and I'm going to do another one up here that I can see that's going to show me where the top of the door is. Part of the deal with these spring-loaded hinges, these self-closing hinges, is when you try to install them, they can like flex just a little bit and make things just a little bit of a pain. So take a piece of scrap and clamp it onto those pencil lines that you just made.
the benefit to that is that that board is going to put that edge in exactly the right spot. The line here at the top shows me where the door lives in this direction. And then what I can do is grab a scratch all and my drill. And I can flatten the flex out of that hinge, push the door against the stop, check my line on top. I got to hit that one again. There we go. Make a dimple. Same thing at the top. And then it's a good idea before you do the rest of the screws. It's a good idea to check your work. Because right now with only one screw in each hinge, if the edge of the door wasn't hitting that pencil line, we'd be able to make a little bit of an adjustment by using the second screw for each hinge. Once you know that you hit your line, go ahead and put the second screw in. Then from there, easy peasy, cut your adjustable shelf to size. That's going to fit in there. Cut your back to size. Don't install the back until any finishing that you're going to do is done. It's a lot easier to finish the cabinet interior when there's no back on it. So take care of all your sanding, all your finishing, then install the back. You're going to have a great wall cabinet. You can hang this in your shop. It's great for router bits or drill bits, or it's really just the right size to be like an over the toilet cabinet in a bathroom. And learning how to do this from this three video series is really, like I said, opens the door to cabinets, bookcases, vanities, a huge array of different things you can build using these approaches. So hope you enjoyed it. Caught all three videos and uh, have a great wall cabinet like this going in your shop.